pass. And it's like I started off, of course, like watching other players, like learning how to do it. But I would go to every friendly, every yeah, tournament. It's the same way with BDR. He went to everything. Yeah. And it's like yeah. you study your matches. You don't just watch them to like see what you did cool uh -huh. and then just like be like, oh, I died there. Like you right. have a notebook, you take notes, you like, okay, I did Find this wrong, this hit. wrong. Yeah. And it's like, okay, when I got a hit, it didn't convert into a kill because I did this. And it's like you start watching those things and learning yourself. Right. And people don't study. People don't want to put the time no. in like that is away from playing. Like of course play time is needed. It's good. But like you got to take that time where you're not yeah, playing. Yeah, pay attention to what what's going wrong. Yeah. All right, who do you want to see win this one? Uh Kaho's a super homie. So I ooh, he could attack that. He's a super homie in the ground. He could have <laughs> done a better double jump too. Yeah. Uh, as uh, like we were saying, panic double jumps that aren't uh, aren't concentrated on sweet spotted. But um, yeah, so I'm hoping Kaho does well in this bracket. This could be a really good match. Swagnips opened up really hard, but Kaho usually performs really well and like just falls outside of like he loses to like Gibbles level players and above basically. He only loses to pretty good players. Yeah. But this might be Swagnips' time to shine. Swagnips Project, has been Project getting better in Project M, better, so. Yeah. That's going to be Kaho's first stock. Takes it back really quickly. I love watching like Project M players like switch to melee. Like at first they always start off shaky, and then it's like when they're like already good at PM, it's like you start looking at him. It's like oh maybe he's actually got like uh -huh. like he's got the fundamentals. Right. He just they needs know to learn to the play characters. Smash Brothers. They just need to learn this specific game. It's the same way. Like if you're good, like basically if you're at a competitive level at any Smash game, then you can beat a casual player at every Smash game. Yeah. Um, just because you know how to play Smash. Even if it's a conversion from like melee to brawl. Yeah, like, yeah, it could be any of them. You know, you understand the basic fundamental of the game. There's different technical aspects, but a casual player doesn't understand. Them. That was actually crazy DI on the down air. Uh, he slid off so fast. Yeah. from the shield. Yeah. He got the slide off, oh, and then he like instantly wave landed on the platform. Okay, that's okay. a free kill. Good. Okay. Hey, like, please go, convert Kyle. that. <laughs> All right, he's, he's slowly catching up. Oh, he's giving it right back. It's the same stock deficit. <laughs> it's okay. He's got this. I believe in him. Yeah. Oh, does not manage to catch up there. Right now in this game, what I don't like is Swagnips is just turning into a bunny, button junkie. Like yeah, he's, he's really just uh, pressuring the shield, and Kyle's letting him get away with it. Uh, it's the same when he plays Fox in this game. It's just like he likes to push a lot of buttons. Uh -huh. Oh, Kaho with a, you never want to position under Falco like that as Sheik. Like, you don't want to say, hey, here's my vulnerability down air. Yeah. You don't want to give him the, the down air. Good, he pressed R. That's always a good position. If you're able to needle down at him and he can't respond, that's always good. And you can set it up into grabs. You're more averse in this matchup than I am because I don't really play Sheik. Uh, um, one of the big things, oh, like, the, the reason why Swagnips isn't winning this is because, like, Kaho's grab. putting himself in the air. And uh, when Swagnips is on the ground, he needs to position himself, like, directly under Sheik. Uh-huh. Like, Sheik cannot drop on Falco yeah, at all. Like, if Falco is there, he should be able to up tilt everything. It's not even just up tilt. He can stand under her shine, stand yeah. under, like... He can come up with a back air and it beats everything that she's got. And what we saw is uh, Swag really tried to like force it. He tried two uh, forward smashes on shield, got grabbed both times, Kaho tech chase, platform chase, actually managed to pull away even though Swag was winning basically that whole game. Kaho managed to pull away that last dog. Swag kind of got nervous and needed to like finish it, but he, he was, failed to. He was getting antsy. He was getting super antsy. And then we see a character switch. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. He's been yeah. playing Fox and teams and he plays Fox in Project M. Oh, okay. Jab reset. Okay. Every oh. player wants to DI in there. They're like, okay, he got my uh, or he got my oh, tech nice chase outwards. Then you want to come back in, yeah. Kaho was not able to call it. Swag takes the first stock. Kaho with a pickup. Oh. oh, if he did like it was a, a good falling chase up, up until he missed that, yeah. Like pseudo triple shot and ground, <laughs> ground it right there. Can you get the back air? Oh, wow. Oh, that's so dangerous. Wow, he's super lucky. Yeah. Right. Manages to get a kill. He could have died in that situation. Oh, very easily. Yeah. At least Kaho has like the state of mind to like not panic up B and actually like grab the ledge. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice tilt. Uh, swag putting on a lot of pressure, not letting Kaho like move. See the fire transformation. Good rollout to get away from that uh, full hot pressure. Oh, that should be a free grab. I don't know why Swag even did that up smash. Yeah. Kaho's gonna stock his needles. 
The smart move is to not approach. Are you? Can you back air through the, tr the tree? Yes. Okay. Not like all the way. Like if Fox is anywhere, he has to be against the tree, right? Yeah. Yeah. He could hit him right now. Like even forward air would hit him. Does forward air cut through it too? Through okay. the through the very close, yeah. Okay. Oh wow, and Swag tries too hard. He had a kill off of the first wave shine, but he didn't take it. Wouldn't Are that be so cool if like actual hands and hits could go through trees like that? <laughs> <laughs> like somebody standing on the opposite side of the tree and you're just like, I got you. <laughs> no, why are you needling? Oh, yeah. As soon as that up B started where it did, he should have thrown his needles and changed his edge guard. So what he actually like, what he could have done if he oh, wanted to use needles? There's his kill. Like he literally could have just grabbed ledge and pressed R. But uh -huh. like when he was facing forward and he started needles, he could have like jumped needle, uh, and then like fall with a forward air and then you just jump reverse needle grab ledge. Uh huh. Swag trying real hard to get an early kill off of Way Shines. But the thing is, if you do that wave shine and you fail to kill off of it, you waste so much percent. Oh, yeah. Because he only did like 10% with that wave shine. If he had done an up smash, it would have done more damage than that. Or it's like even like Nair playing. Yeah, yeah, pretty much <laughs> any attack off of the wave shine setup. But he just did wave shine off stage and actually didn't get that much reward for it. It's a big gambit. I don't think you should really try it against uh, like a player that's recovering well against you. I mean, the only possibility oh. is like. Like smash giing the shine. Like if they start smash giing the shine in, uh -huh. and then you uh, we get extra hits off of it. Yeah. Or it's like you just. Uh, I mean, if you're perfect, you can wave shine and then run past wave shine. Like just keep going uh -huh. back and forth. But people aren't at that yet. People don't do that yet. <laughs> no, don't give up ground. He, he let oh, you go above go. him. That's okay. He got there. We go. <laughs> yeah, he got got some freebies there. Stock needles back up. Okay. Transform into Zelda and then turn back and gets all your staling away. Does it really? Yeah, so if you, if you transform to Zelda and then just go back, like all of your moves are completely fresh again. Oh, okay. Oh. That was an ambitious and dash attack. Just why are you. Wh yeah, I don't know why he's what? doing so many. Like at that point, all you gotta do is up smash him. I'm so, I'm so happy he died, he died for it. Or is he that? Yeah. yeah. It's not like, about the percent or the kill, it's about the message. <laughs> Look, I can wave shine you. You can kill me, but you know I wave shine you like four times again. Took 11 flag percent. He's got to stop chasing him. Like he's going so hard for these kill moves. Like even like a running yeah. air that's safe on shield yeah. is gonna get him off stage. And then Sheik ledge guard position. Kaho doing a great job of putting damage on safely. Yeah, he's There's not doing like he's not approaching. Right. He knows he doesn't have to approach. There should be a kill. Oh no, it doesn't get the full edge guard. Swag oh, gets up till trade or before till trade. Fall off. Oh no, trade. Oh wow, Swag kind of getting rocked here. Swag Nips is used to having to roll on stage against Sheik because in Project M the ledge grabs aren't as long. Oh, that's true. So, dude, that was all because he didn't do that wave shine. He lost that game from that position. Yeah. Because he didn't do an up smash out of that wave shine. <laughs> when you rewatch that, if you rewatch your games, then. I guarantee understand you that, that wave that wave shot.